Hey guys, this is Dodoid. So, I thought I'd show you something a bit different today. And, uh, that's my, uh, lab. Now, this isn't like a computer lab like you'd see in a school or whatever. It's, uh, more of a combined storage and workspace where I keep stuff that doesn't really fit in the room where I, uh, film most of the time. I thought I'd give a little tour of the room, so let's get right into that. So, uh, starting in the furnace room, you can hear the furnace right behind me. I thought I'd show you the kind of networking shelf. So, uh, over here we have the uh, ISP's sort of combination router and uh, modem. And uh, yeah, this runs the sort of outer network of my DMZ. The only device on the outer network, barring the Apple router we'll get to in a sec, is uh, this Mini Indigo. You can see this is a Mini Indigo. Same sort of thing you could order on my website. As you can see, I run it as a server, which seems to be what some of you want to do with yours as well, which is cool. So then in the middle here, we have the uh, Apple Airport with Time Capsule, which is a pretty expensive way to get backup space, but uh, for some of my family, it makes it pretty easy for them to back up their MacBooks, so, you know, we use it. It works. And uh, that also serves the inner network of the DMZ. So uh, then we have some cables running along here, as well as the power supply for the Mini Indigo you can see is up there. The cable from the Apple router one of them runs into this uh, D-Link power line. We mainly use it for printers. And the other one goes into this green cable, which is duct taped to the ceiling in two places. And it goes along down to the floor and uh, into this little small switch that I use for the lab. There have been times when um, this wouldn't have been enough, this little switch here. Uh, I used to have a 24 port down here, but the eight ports is enough now that I have a lot more stuff upstairs. So we're in the lab for real now. I'm gonna start with this desk, which is one of the first ones I ever had down here. And we'll start with the top shelf. So in this box, we have some uh, X10 home automation stuff. This is old, um, simple power line based sort of pre-IoT home automation stuff. My dad used to run these off of a Linux machine that controlled the whole house, which was pretty cool. You can kind of think of it like a pre-IoT that doesn't harvest your data as much. Uh, up here, random CD case, something's anything in it. Uh, CPUs, there's, uh, looks like, uh, LGA775, that's some uh, acetone that I use to clean my, uh, print printer nozzles, uh, random junk, papers, pencils, that's a, uh, SGI Octane CPU, single R10,000, I think, and another case I don't think has anything in it. This shelf is, uh, pretty much completely junk. Uh, next one along, there's a monitor, this is hooked up to some cables that I can plug into anything I have on this table. Although, of course, so messy, can't, us can't usually use that. Uh, random PC bits, some boxes from Raspberry Pis holding the monitor up. Over here, we have some Pegasus stuff. This has been my Pegasus shelf since, well, since Pegasus existed. And, uh, you know, there's some non-related stuff, but the cool thing we have here, we have um, the sticker sheets that were used for Pegasus products. So that's the those for the Pegasus N. And these are original back stickers for the Pegasus X. Made those on uh, Staples paper. And uh, there's some other random junk here, like a stock Odroid C1 case. As you can see, that's branded for the Pegasus N. On this table, we have some old PC stuff. This is below the monitor. Uh, there's an older AMD motherboard back there. I think that's actually of the era that the CPUs could run on the same boards, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, keyboard, that's hooked up to the same sort of... Uh, set up to test things here, although again I don't use it much. Uh, some video cards. This is a uh, laptop motherboard that I use to practice surface mount soldering on, which is kind of fun. Um, screwdrivers, screws, mouse again for the setup, RAM. There's a small form factor Dell back there, which I don't use much anymore. I think the hard drive's gone bad in it, but the rest of it works. Core 2 Duo. Uh, this is the uh, shelf of stickers. I keep any stickers I get from PCs here. So as you can see I have ranging all the way from uh, Core 2 up until Haswell, as long as some weird combination ones with like this uh, AMD Phenom X3 and NVIDIA. Uh, PC parts that I'm testing here, I don't think these ones work. And uh, underneath them we have a, a NAS, which uh, yeah, not that big. I think there's 1.5 terabytes in there, so pretty small. Up here I have a painting of some of the PCs I used to have. I did this when I was probably 9 years old or so, so you can see the monitor in the middle. I've painted a very crude Windows XP background onto it. Uh, yeah, I, I think I still have some of these machines, but I actually can't really tell which are which. 
This is my Pegasus name tag from, uh, as you can see, 2014. So this was used at the launch of the Pegasus X. And uh, I don't know if we wore these again for the N or if we had another one, but this is the only one I still have. Fun fact, the 700 means nothing. My friend said 300. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. He just made them up. There is also some other miscellaneous stuff on this wall. I'll show you one or two of the cool ones. These are the back stickers for the finalized Pegasus X, and I don't know if you can faintly read it, it says Pegasus N Beta. So that was on the Beta Pegasus N we did. This is the kind of 3D printing area. As you can see, we're making some mini indigos right now. There's also the uh, isopropyl alcohol I used to clean the bed, and uh, some failed prints sitting around. As you can see, the mini indigo prints are just starting off, and I'm not sure these are doing too well. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on these. Over here is just a few random bits and pieces. I really don't know what half the stuff over there is. Down below the table we have some spare octanes. I think they have most of the parts in them, but uh, one of them has a dead power supply that's down there. So, uh, most, oct most of an octane. Uh, octane hard drive in the carrier there. And there's a uh, first gen Cricut Expression personal cutting machine down there for, uh, and for crafts and things, but you can do some neat things with it as well in terms of technology, so that's maybe an upcoming project. Maybe I'll never get it going. Who knows? This is my RAM bucket. It's all PC RAM in there, so anything SGI or whatever would go in the boxes behind me. Down here we have some uh, other random junk. There's some Linksys WRT54G routers, game controller I think, personal DVD player or something. I made a video about this thing once, but the video did quite badly, so you probably haven't seen it. In the middle of the room we have a sort of pile of random stuff. Since it kind of sits in the middle of everything else, I used to call it the island, but then it got so big, now I actually call it the continent. I'm not kidding. Hey, it does contain a 3D plus surround system. This is mostly a basket of miscellaneous and mostly PC related cables. There's also some really boring stuff in there like extension cords, but really it's not going to be something worth opening up and taking apart to show on video. Down here I have my SGI video creator box. I showed this in my video about Unix HQ. Uh, I haven't gotten it running with anything yet, mainly because I don't have a ton of use for it, but it's cool to have and someday I'm sure I will get it going. And if you move the video creator box out of the way, you can see the uh, Motorola CPX2000 I showed on my advent calendar series. Quite a cool thing, but I uh, don't have any extra cards for it, so it's pretty much just a PC that's a bit bigger, louder, and dirtier. Space is really limited down here, so I try to make use of the roof as much as possible. As you can see, there I have a footstool, there's some boxes and things up there. It's stuff that I don't need to access often, but feel like I still want to keep. So yeah, I do put things in the roof when I need to. Up there there's some uh, RC car boxes for some reason, CD players, and boxes from Casio Cassiopeias, which are pretty cool. I couldn't find the boxes for those things when I made my video about them, but uh, I do have them, and here they are. This is what I'm sure you'll want to see, uh, my SGI parts. So I, I have a pretty much mixed assortment of SGI and general SCSI related things in here, so uh, there's pretty much a complete octane worth of spare parts in there, minus the case and power supply. Uh, drive in the front, CD drive, doesn't work. Uh, there's a card for fiber channel uh, on PCI, I think, so I guess I could run that in my uh, octane's PCI shoebox. 3D space mouse. Indigo keyboard for an indigo I don't have, and uh, yeah, lots of SGI stuff in the in those boxes. There's also this um, power thing. I don't really know what this thing is. The part number format is almost like an SGI part number, but isn't, so total toss-up. Probably not SGI, but it came with a bunch of SGI stuff, so if anyone can tell me what kind of a rack this would go in or what it is, that would be very helpful. Thank you. As you can see, there's the spare octane parts. Pretty much three quarters of that box is taken up with it, so I think there's almost a complete octane in there. I know I have graphics, system board, CPU, don't know if there's RAM. I have a really old IBM clone power supply. These are some Cobalt Networks Rack 4s. Uh, Cobalt Networks was originally MIPS based, but uh, by the time they made these they were x86. And uh, yeah, they're sort of uh, early 2000s Linux server things that I haven't managed to get going. Quite a few problems. Uh, in fact, when I got them, the power supplies weren't even put together. So, ongoing project. You might see them someday, you might not. Who knows? The rest of the shelf is just miscellaneous stuff. Mainly uh, AV cables, and there's some PC power supplies at the bottom. I'm sure this is alright. Here I have an Apple keyboard with the world's most satisfying caps lock key. Actually locks down when you press it really clicky, whereas the rest of the keys are just sort of rubber dome mush. Up here I have some Irix CDs. On the end you can see the hard drive that OS First Timer used when he connected to my Octane. Definitely keeping that. 
I promised myself I'll only keep one shelf worth of old AV junk, but as you can see, I quickly break that promise. I quickly break that promise. Quickly break that promise. Quickly break that promise. Here I have yet another miscellaneous shelf, PC video cards, System 7.5 floppies, yeah, mainly junk here. Also a small selection of the healthy helping of compact discs I have scattered around the lab. Barely visible down there, I have a ti 994 a computer. There's another one over behind me. I don't know if either of these work, but uh, yeah, hope to get around to them someday. So many projects. This is also where my Sunblade 2000 lives for now, at least. Here I have some Indigo 2 feet. These are surprisingly valuable, because a lot of companies who bought Indigo 2s threw these out if they didn't want to use them, so quite a few people have Indigo 2s without these nowadays. This is kind of an anachronism. A uh, SCSI DVD drive. Useful for the uh, Octane, especially because I don't have many CDs sitting around to burn, so uh, I can burn to DVDs instead and it'll work just fine. Up here we have my O2. It's the one you've seen a video about. It does work, but unfortunately the disc's gone bad since the video was made, so uh, this should be up and running again soon since I have spare discs, but for now it can only get up to the system maintenance menu. Can't boot IRIX. And down there I have uh, one of the Indigo 2s. I don't know if it'll be this one or the other one that I show in my video. They're pretty similar specs, but that one's a little quicker, so it'll probably be that one. I've had to pull the camera out quite a bit for this, but as you can see, I've recently gotten an original SGI monitor. Seems to be the same model they had in Jurassic Park as well, so that's going to be extra cool and running uh, FSN on it. And that's my main Octane there. Dual R12000 and a gig of RAM, so yeah, pretty nice machine, although not really Octane 2 spec. And down here on the floor next to the Indigo 2, I have a, a Sun Ultra 10. It's a pretty neat machine that I'm working on getting going right now. Uh, needs a new hard drive, but interestingly it's IDE, so I have tons of those. I'll give you a little sneak preview of its insides. It looks quite PC-like at first glance, but... The CPU's at the bottom, and there's this riser card that sticks out, meaning that the expansion slots are actually vertical, as opposed to horizontal like on a standard PC. The hard drive's also under the power supply, which is not super uncommon, but a bit strange still. And Sun is probably the only hardware maker you're going to find that puts a Java sticker on the exterior of their case. I have my dual keyboards and mice here, PS2 for the Octane, and uh, Sun for the Sun. Over here I have an early form of optical mouse. This was made by Mouse Systems, but for Sun. It needs to be used on this special mouse pad, which is actually kind of cold to the touch. I think it's either metal underneath or glass on top. As you can see, the mouse has a sensor that looks a bit like a mouse from today with a optical sensor on it, but uh, this is an older version, and again, it needs the special mouse pad, which is a bit strange. And in case you've never seen a Sun keyboard, it has some interesting keys along the side that essentially nothing else really does. Down here, there's a bit more PC and miscellaneous stuff just sitting on the floor. As you can see, I've named my knockoff mobile VR headset the Octopus Raft. This is where I store my spare flat-screen monitors. And since the shelf was too short, I jammed some old satellite TV remote controls in it. Supported by those satellite TV remotes are these, my other Indigo 2, and two Indies. As you can see, the bottom one's a bit bluer, probably didn't sit in the sun as much. And behind them there's a monitor and a broken PlayStation 3. <laughs>